Hey, what's up everybody? I wanted to make a video about my investment style, like a high level overview of my investment style. And that's because uh, I feel like some people might join a uh, join the live stream expecting excitement or some day trading hot stock tips or stuff like that. And you're going to be disappointed because it's, it's not going to be like that. I'll drop this bomb when you're right at the start. I'm a value investor. <laughs> And uh, I feel like some of you are rolling your eyes now and laughing at me, you bastards. Uh, I'm just kidding. I don't care. It's whatever. I'll just say I'll just say this. I'm not your traditional value investor. And I jotted down a couple of reasons why. And um, the first is I'm not in the camp that thinks value's been underperforming. I actually think it's been tremendously successful over the past decade. So I always think it's funny when I see those headlines: "Is value dead? Is value dead? Is it coming back?" And uh, I try to think about why why everyone thinks that and I, the most obvious reason is just because we all lean on those oversimplified ETFs to measure the style success but uh, I mean that's not a good way to measure a bona fide value approach it's um and, and part of that is because value is so subjective it's not so simple that you can just boil it down to a couple of metrics or something like that so because it's so subjective it's it's difficult to measure its success and uh, I think that's part of the disconnect there and um, yeah uh, second way I feel I'm different is I'm not building no discounted cash flow models during my during my stream during my process. I uh, I'm a huge fan of Demonoran. Go check out his stuff if you want to learn more about valuation. But it does it it's a waste of my time as part of my process. I'm not saying that's the case for anybody. I'm sure it serves a purpose for other other people's needs and there's other ways to invest besides my own. But uh, for my style, it doesn't make any sense. I um, part of that is because. Um, Value is just one factor. I mean, I'm value. I'm, I'm I'm a value guy, right? And that's where I started my development. And um, I understand the importance of value. But the issue is, it's just one factor. And I used to think it was so important, primacy of value, right? And, I, and I'd weight it quite heavily. But the truth is, it just matters a lot less than uh, than many think. And so, um, yeah. So usually, the values I'll frequently be leaning on, and you'll see this during the stream. It only takes me a minute or two to calculate. Um, and I think. What matters, many people think that it matters like getting an accurate value, evaluation, right? But that's ridiculous. Like no one cares. Who cares? No one cares if you can accurately value a stock, which is, I mean, you can't even get an accurate, precise value, right? That's ridiculous. But even if you could, even if you somehow successfully, perfectly measured a stock, the value of a stock, the market doesn't give a shit. No one cares, right? What matters is incorporating those values into a framework that you can leverage over time to profit, to uh, to to outperform the market. I mean, that's what matters. So unless you have a, fr it's the framework that matters. And within that framework, value is but one factor, right? There's other things that matter too. And uh, so for that reason, I, I find it's beneficial. Don't, we don't waste so much time valuing one particular stock. Just get a general idea as to what that valuation is and do it for as many stocks as you can in as consistently as possible. And then you can, then you can tap those and incorporate it more easily in my opinion. You'll see this. I'm, I'm rambling now, but uh, you'll see it during the stream and some other videos and stuff. Uh, all right, a third way I'm different. I use technical analysis. Ooh, right? I mean, now even the value folks are uh, shaking their heads at me. But um, I don't know what to say. I, uh, the charts do a good job of illustrating um, the trends, uh, prevailing sentiment, and even the fundamental events that are unfolding, which is frustrating as a fundamentals-focused value investor because... Uh, I've invested in stock in the past, and and then after the fact, I'll look back on the chart and just thinking, damn, uh, all that fundamental research I did, I could have just been tracking the chart, and um, not not auto, not always, right? It's not perfect, uh, but the technical analysts know this, and uh, and uh, but it's 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 a good enough shortcut that it should be used. Now, by the same token, right? Many you have many value folks who are criticizing the charts, saying they're they're following everything. And the the technical analysts, they do the same thing. They're they're they think the fundamentals folks that they're all crazy for looking at that stuff and the truth is i i think both sides have a point and um and so that's why i'm always gonna like i think it's beneficial to use both that's part of my edge i feel i'm kind of surprised more people don't um but yeah you'll see in my you'll you'll see more in the stream um so yeah that's kind of how i'm different as a value investor but there's some additional things that would really be useful for you to know about my approach before you check out the stream and the first one is that I currently shoot for 50 to 100% annualized returns, which is aggressive, right? And uh, it's so aggressive that I'm, I bet that my style it would not be suitable for many people who might be tuning into the stream. So just a reminder, the, the, the live stream and, and this channel is educational in nature. I just wanted you to see how a legitimate process might, might look so you can maybe glean some aspects for yourself. But don't think the way I'm approaching the market and, and even the stocks I'm investing in would be appropriate for you. Just 
I'm always going to say that just to remind you, but it's it's really important to understand that. Um, but anyway, 50 to 100%. And it's important, like when you're striving for t- returns like that, at least as an individual investor, it's um, it's not, you don't get that every year, right? It's, it's lumpy returns. You know, I, there may be years where I don't get to 50%, and then, but there's going to be windfall years. And every once in a while, you start to like, is that windfall year going to come? Or are those years going to come? But they inevitably do. And I think that speaks to the aspect of, uh, of value and why part of the reason I think it's going to persist. I mean, it's it's grounded in human biases, which in turn is grounded in our evolution. I, I think that's going to sustain for a bit. I know algorithms and robots and stuff. You got to keep an open mind about this, but and I'm biased. But uh, anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm going off topic again. So uh, lumpy returns, but also I need to uh, I need to take on a lot of risk to achieve retain, returns like that. And so one way I do that is, I mean, I'm generally looking for uh, two to four baggers in a typical market in five to 10 baggers in a bear market. And of course, you know, that means I'm often dealing in shit, right? So I, I uh, classically speak, I mean, I'll probably be better um, classified as a, um, uh, a deep value investor, right? Um, but I... Uh, yeah, those are what you need to invest in. So those those questionable stocks, the ones that have a lot of hair on it, if you want to achieve outsized returns, at least as an individual investor. If you have other ways to do it as an individual investor, I keep an open mind about this. And um, so share your share your thoughts. Um, most things are not sustainable. Most processes that I come across doesn't mean I've seen everything, but um, that's how I go about it. And and so I say I use tactical analysis, right? My biggest wins are when the chart lo- the, t- the chart looks like shit. Uh, it's, that probably goes without saying, but uh, when no one wants to buy it and it looks like it's going bankrupt or it's, it's dead, then you dig in deep. That's when you really dig in deep and you just need to assess, is this company going bankrupt? Can it survive another year? Because that's when you make the most money. When perceptions go from the company's dead to, oh shit, maybe it's going to survive another year or two. And then boom, 3x, 4x overnight, if seemingly. Um, all right. So I'm always on the lookout for attractively priced call options, typically leaps, but I find they're almost always overpriced. Um, and so because of that, I'm really particular about when I buy them. I want a, a catalyst of, of a, a certain type of catalyst, a business event or something, but really my favorite time to buy them is when the market's tanking, right? I mean, that probably goes without saying it's the best time to buy just about anything, right? But um, during those times, if you're keeping your eyes peeled, like 10 to 20 baggers on the options, not uncommon at all. I try to shoot for 50 baggers. Um, like the, what happens is, and you saw this a couple months ago, liquidity dries up quite a bit. And uh, if you're looking at a few months, almost forget about it. You need to, you kind of make the market. But um, but they're out there. You need to keep, need to keep your eyes peeled. Uh, my holding period, I don't know how helpful this is for people. It ranges from 3 to 24 months. Is that, is, that help, is that helpful for anybody? The point I'm just trying to convey there is that I'm not a day trader. Um, I may sell out after a month just because I got lucky. Um, sometimes I'll hold for a couple of years. Sometimes that, that's how long it takes a thesis to, to unfold. But I'm not a buy and hold investor. I'm not holding for five, 10 years in, or, or forever. Uh, but uh, it's not my style. Uh, historically, I've run a pretty concentrated portfolio, like 10 to 25 stocks, maybe 35 stocks, I forget. I, um, but this year, a balloon to over 100, I, over 150. I think I even got over 150 right now, which is ridiculous, right, for an individual investor. Um, it was for diversification reasons. I tend to diversify more during like crises and stuff like that. And uh, this was an extreme case. And um, I'm, it's probably just temporary. I'm probably going to go back. But I'll be honest, I'm always tinkering with my approach and trying new things. And uh, there's definitely some aspects I like about having so many stocks in, in the portfolio. Um, but obviously it gets unwieldy, right? Falling so many stocks, but we'll see. Um, but it will probably come down. It's perfect for the stream though, because now you get to see a whole bunch of stocks that I may have invested in. Uh, so that's great. I occasionally short stocks. It's becoming a bigger part of my process. I'm trying to incorporate it more and more, but I still focus mostly on the long side. That's definitely because that's how you get the two to, two to four baggers and so forth. But, uh, you'll see me short. Sometimes it's just cause I'm bored. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, I try to short. I this the timing of it is so difficult, as everyone knows, right? But um, we'll see how much I do it during the stream. Um, and then at this point in my career, a, a big part of my process is just feel like I, I can't really boil it down to strict buy and sell, buy and sell criteria. And believe me, I tried. I mean, I feel like all value investors try to do this checklist and everything like that. Um, but for me personally, it feels like it impedes my education a little bit. Like I, I value learning new things and education quite highly. And so if you have strict rules or you just say, oh, out of my circle of competence, you kind of just block off a whole area of the market. And I like to expand my universe of stocks, even if I if I have to step out of my circle of competence, if you will, just a little bit, and I'm a little bit uncomfortable, but that's, that's how I learn. 
And uh, I feel as though it's been a net benefit to me over the years. And um, it's broadened my horizon and I have just a larger universe. And um, yeah. So when I, you'll see me, I, you'll say, oh, why exactly did you do this? I say it comes down to feel. It's a whole bunch of factors that feed into it. But uh, yeah. Um, anyway, I think that covers a lot. Hopefully you have a better idea as to my investment style. I didn't cover everything here. I just jotted these down quickly. I, I hope I covered the, all the important things. As soon as I finish this, I'm sure I'm going to say, oh, I missed something important. So uh, I can touch touch on it in a different video. I'll probably do another video too where I talk about like really uh, things I look for in a stock, things I like to see. That would probably be helpful, I would imagine. Um, but yeah, I hope you check out this video before the stream so you have a better idea as to, as to what I'm doing during it. And um, that's all for this video. Thanks so much for watching.